When you think of a modern computer, it has many types of interfaces or ways that it can pass information to other computers. There are serial ports, parallel ports, USB ports, Ethernet ports, and beyond that, there are other communication protocols like SPI or I2C that are widely used in electronics. For microcontrollers, being able to pass information to another computer is as important as it is for human beings to be able to talk to each other in the same language. One common type of communication interface is called serial communication, commonly referred to as RS-232 serial. This type of communication is drop-dead simple with no overhead. It requires sending 8 bits of information over a single transmission wire. Because of its simplicity, it's a great starting point for learning how to send and receive commands to or from a computer. The CP2102 board that we've been using up to this point acts as a USB to serial converter, since most modern computers no longer have serial ports on them anymore. So we'll use it to assist us in talking to our computer over serial. Here is the schematic for this lesson. Let's build it up part by part. First we need a power supply regulation circuit. We'll use a 9 volt battery and a 7805 plus 5 volt regulator to create a regulated plus 5 volts for our system. Next we'll set up the microcontroller connections to the plus 5 volt and ground. The reset control circuit consists of a push button connected to the microcontroller and then to ground, as well as a pull up resistor. To program the microcontroller, we'll use a USB to serial converter. Later on, we will also use this converter to send commands to the microcontroller from a laptop. Next, we create the 16 MHz frequency control circuit using a crystal and two 22 picofarad capacitors. Lastly, we will connect four LEDs and four current limiting resistors to digital pins 13, 12, 11, and 10 of the microcontroller. And that's the complete hardware schematic. The software side of this experiment will use some new features in order to access the serial communication module. If you go to the arduino.cc website, then to the reference section, and scroll down a bit, you will find the serial communication functions. The serial communication functions that we'll be using in this lesson are the begin, available, and read functions. Now let's write the program for this lesson. We'll create the setup and loop functions as before. And first we'll create an integer called number for storing a value. Then the serial module will be initialized to 9600 bits per second and the four LEDs on the digital pins 10, 11, 12, and 13 will all be set up as outputs. Now in the loop function, we will check to see if the serial module has received any data using the simple if statement. If data is received, we will store it in an integer called number. After that, we will use a series of if else if statements to check the integer number. And depending upon whether the user has sent the command one, two, three, or four, different LEDs will turn on. And if the user sends the command five, then all LEDs will be turned off. The last three lines of the code will send three letters to our laptop, OK, and a new line return. This will let us know that the microcontroller received the command and executed it. And that's the complete software program. Before we get building, let's take a look at all the parts that we'll be using in this experiment. The large parts are a jumper wire kit, the components kit, and a breadboard. The specific parts from the components kit that we'll be using are the 7805 plus 5 volt regulator, 5 100 ohm resistors, 1 10 kilo ohm resistor, 1 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor, 2 10 microfarad capacitors, a push button, an AT Mega 328 microcontroller with Arduino compatible bootloader, a 16 megahertz crystal, five red LEDs, two 22 picofarad capacitors, a nine volt battery connector, four jumper wires, 
a USB to serial converter with jumper wires, a 9 volt battery, and a laptop with the Arduino IDE installed. Now we'll use a time lapse and show the construction of the circuit step by step so that you can follow along. And with the circuit complete, go ahead and power it up. Connect the USB to serial converter module and then upload the program to the microcontroller. As the program is uploading, go into the Arduino IDE to Tools and then select Serial Monitor. In this window, you can send any of the one two, three, four, or five commands to the microcontroller, and it will obey by turning on the correlating LED or turning them all off. Here you can see me trying different combinations to tell the microcontroller to turn LEDs on and then sending command five to turn them off. In the real world, Standard serial communication, as we just saw, is less common than it used to be. It has been replaced with smarter protocols like USB, Firewire, Ethernet, and other types of very high-speed digital communication. Looking around, it is very easy to see many devices, from cell phones to cars, that connect to and transfer information to other devices, whether they are printers, keyboards, or simply other computers. Thus, common communication protocols are very necessary, and as embedded system developers, you must be familiar with how they work and how to implement them. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. At this point, we now have a good understanding of the basics that surround microcontroller development, so let's have some fun. In the next lesson, we will build a game using LEDs, push buttons, and interrupts.